Welcome to this micro-learning course on risk management for safety professionals. In this course, we'll focus on three key topic areas. We'll have a broader understanding of risk management, we'll review some of the fundamental concepts of risk management, and finally, we'll outline your path to become a risk management expert. What is risk management and how does it drive an organization's success? Over the last 15 years, Many organizations have shifted from compliance-based safety programs focused on regulations created by government entities like OSHA to risk-based processes typically based on voluntary consensus standards. In recent years, the American National Standards Institute, or ANSI, and the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, have published several well-known voluntary consensus standards addressing risk management. The information in this video is based on these consensus standards and technical documents. In this video, we will review the fundamental concepts of risk management and outline the journey you can take to become a risk management expert for your organization. Before we begin, let's define risk. In a nutshell, risk is the effect of uncertainty on an organization's objectives, which can be positive or negative. Here's an example that will help you understand this better. Acme Manufacturing Company is a mid-sized furniture assembly company with 150 workers. It's been working to grow its business by acquiring other companies. This objective has both positive and negative risks. What is a positive outcome of taking the risk? The company will grow. What is a negative outcome of the risk? The acquisition may not be as profitable as anticipated, and the company may lose money in the long run. Understanding the risk of acquiring a company is an example of how an organization would consider risk from a strategic perspective. Here's a more tactical example of how an organization understands risk. It involves two important factors, likelihood and severity. Let's go back to Acme Manufacturing Company. The employees at Acme Manufacturing Company use manually operated push carts to move equipment and tools from the warehouse to the station where workers assemble desk chairs. This task exposes workers to several hazards, including the amount of strength and force required to push or pull the carts, the possibility that objects in the cart will shift while being moved, or that the cart may tip over. How do we calculate the risk involved in performing this task? The company must consider the likelihood that an injury will occur and the severity of that injury. How often is the task performed? How many workers perform the task? These inputs, among others, help determine the likelihood. The type of potential injury determines the severity. This might range from sprains and strains from moving the cart to bumps and bruises if products inside the cart shift and hit their hands or fingers. Now let's review some fundamental concepts of risk management and the ways in which companies manage risk. All organizations should view occupational safety and health risk management as an integral part of its operations. Managing these risks requires deep understanding of key principles, framework, and processes. It also requires proficiency in employing a range of tools and methods, including how to select and implement those most appropriate for your organization. Effectively applying risk management principles can help your organization improve safety and create value. Another critical element of successful implementation of risk management is the commitment of your organization's leadership they must embrace and enforce the processes at all levels and in all activities, including policy statements, governance statements, and other types of communication within your organization. So let's go back to Acme Manufacturing to analyze their leadership's commitment to risk management. The executive team has revised the mission statement to emphasize risk management. The same language is reflected on its website. Senior leaders also ensure workers are given time to participate in risk assessment team meetings and approve risk management-related expenses, such as purchasing tools, equipment, or safety controls recommended by the risk assessment teams.
This illustration highlights the essential and interconnected elements of the risk management process. ANSI ASSP ISO IEC 31010-2019 lists over 30 different tools that can be used for the various steps of risk management. ASSP TR 31010-2020, a technical report published by ASSP, adds many more. The technical report also provides more depth and context to the risk management process. Both these documents provide you with important information in selecting the best tool for each step in accordance with your organization's objectives. While it is critical to understand all the elements of the risk management process, our focus here is risk assessment and treatment. Risk assessment is at the heart of the risk management process. It involves three unique steps. 1. Risk identification. 2 risk analysis, and three, risk evaluation. Let's take a closer look at each step. Step one, risk identification. Simply put, risk identification is the process of identifying hazards workers are exposed to that can result in an injury. Remember how ACME determined the hazards of using manual push carts and how those exposures could cause injury? That process is called risk identification. Step two, risk analysis. Risk analysis is the process of understanding the likelihood that an event may occur and the potential consequences. It produces an estimated risk level that is critical to understanding the nature of the risk and the proactive measures your organization may need to take to manage or reduce it. In our example, ACME's safety and health manager tracks data to evaluate the risks involved in specific tasks. This data, which includes the history of injuries and incidents involving this task, and information from regular inspections of work areas, helps ACME determine the likelihood of exposure, as well as the potential severity of an injury. In addition to this company-specific data, the safety manager also uses external data from various sources, including ACME's insurance provider and the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. To conduct its risk analysis, ACME uses a common tool, a risk matrix as shown here. This matrix calculates a risk level from 1 to 16, with each score corresponding to a color. For the task of moving carts with desk chair parts around the floor, the risk assessment team determined the likelihood of exposure was likely 3 and the severity was moderate, 2, resulting in a risk score of 6, which is a medium or green risk. Step 3. Risk Evaluation Risk evaluation compares an organization's estimated risk level from risk analysis with its criteria for acceptable risk. Each organization has a unique acceptable risk level that is directly related to its industry and hazard profile. For example, a retail company's acceptable risk level is different than that of a construction company. Let's use ACME's risk criteria to illustrate. If the risk level is very low, 2 or under, low between 3 to 4, or medium between 4 to 6, it may be that no further work is needed other than to verify that the controls intended to maintain the risk level are working, are monitored for conformance, and have some methodology to alert when the controls are failing. For those risk levels above ACME Manufacturing's acceptable risk criteria, either serious between 8 and 9, or high above 12, the priority for treatment of the risk is determined by its significance to the organization. Hazard controls are ranked according to their effectiveness and follow a well-established hierarchy shown here. As you can see, elimination is the most effective control, while personal protective equipment, or PPE, is the least effective. Using this diagram, let's go back to the risk level ACME calculated regarding manual pushcarts. The administrative controls in place include limiting the weight of products on the cart and training workers to identify any obstacles or hazards in the pathway. 
At this time, no additional action is needed to reduce the risk, except reviewing the assessment each year and using it when investigating incidents. But what if the risk assessment team is concerned about the minor incidents that could have been more serious and decides to go beyond administrative controls that rely on worker compliance and proposes a new method of moving desk chair parts around the production floor? Based on their design review, the desk chair assembly area would move to the location where the parts are stored, eliminating the need to move them manually and reducing the lifting risk by purchasing vacuum lift devices and battery-powered pallet jacks. While this recommended change would cost more money up front, the safety manager used a return on investment or ROI analysis and determined that the costs of injuries and property damage would be recovered within three years. Senior leadership agreed to these changes. Now that we've provided a brief overview of the fundamental concepts of risk management, let's talk about the skills you'll need to become a risk management expert in your organization. To start, you must have solid understanding of the principles, framework, and process of risk management, particularly risk assessment. You must learn how you can apply the framework to your organization's objectives. You'll also need to learn how to implement the three-step risk assessment process, recognize the wide variety of risk assessment tools, and understand which work best and when. If your organization has already selected tools for assessing risk, you must know how to implement them. You also need to know how to train your risk assessment teams to execute the tools properly. If your organization has not yet selected risk assessment tools, you can make recommendations based on your organization's objectives, hazard profile, and potential obstacles workers may encounter. Start with the principles of prevention through design, a core methodology for reducing risk to an acceptable level. Then strive to develop more advanced skills to manage risk. When reducing organizational risks, you play a vital role in identifying methods that focus on design strategies and other specialized approaches that help your organization move from achieving compliance to proactively managing risk. Elevate your risk management expertise, advance your organization, and make a difference in the lives of workers each day. Let's begin our journey together.